preach. Here's a clavicle. It actually, on inspiration, comes in a, an inch above your collarbone. Wow. So when you're taking a deep breath, that apex or cupola of the lung rises an inch or so, the pleura goes that much higher above your collarbone. So again, I've never had anybody come back and say I saved their life, but I always give a warning. If somebody is coming at you with a knife and you're running away from them, you do not want to go, <gasps> because all, all it's going to do is Bring pull your lungs up into your neck area, and if you get stabbed in the neck, you're going to get a collapsed lung. So what you want to do is go, <laughs> compress your lungs, and sink them down as far deep into your neck. Do that one more time. <laughs> so that they stay down here. Now, of course, you're stabbing somebody. You know then that you would have to stab them between the ribs, not in the neck area, if you wanted to collapse your lungs, OK? Just in case that was the route that you were going. All right, so let's look at the um, structure of the lungs. And uh, we'll look at their covering first, since that's what I talk about. And this image here, it's hard to see the structure, but you can see the lung tissue is right here. And this light blue is indicating the pleura, which is our serous membrane. It can be more easily seen on this image. So you can see that the pleural cavity is largest in the inferior aspect the, along the diaphragm. So give me a moment while you erase this, and then I will diagram. No, these are two. I'm going to put these up this afternoon as new slides. These are ones I put up over the found over the weekend. This one you have in your lecture, in your PowerPoints, but not the other ones. All right, so that pointed portion of the lung is known as the apex or cupola, as I indicated already. And the center area here where the bronchi pass through is the hilus or hilum. And so when we put on the pleura, we have visceral pleura, which is attached to the lung surface. And then it doesn't pass where the vessels and Airways pass through, it loops back on itself, attaches to the intercostal spaces and to the diaphragm. So we have visceral pleura. What does that say? Apex capilla? And this is a serous membrane, just like the peritoneum and just like the visceral pericardium. So the simple squamous epithelium is facing into the pleural cavity and a small amount of serous fluid is secreted. And the outer layer, what you see down here attached to the ribs, is the parietal pleura. Now I've shown a bit more space than actually exists um, between the visceral and the parietal pleura. Even here in the recess, that's collapsed and the two pleura are actually touching each other with just a small amount of fluid between them, kind of like a collapsed baggie. And guess what? We have hydrogen bonds present between the serous fluid of the parietal pleura and the serous fluid of the visceral pleura, creating surface tension. Is that good or bad? Good. You don't want them filling up with fluid water. Well, not only that, but as, the, as you lift up the ribs or you lower the diaphragm, that surface tension the hydrogen bonds between those help to expand the lungs. So it aids lung expansion. It aids. It aids. Thank so you. surface tension in the pleural cavity aids lung expansion. Surface tension in the alveoli inhibits it, makes it more difficult, makes it more difficult to expand those airways. Okay, looking at the regions of the lungs then, I'm going to erase this and just draw one lung a little bit larger because this gets a little bit too busy. So right and left lungs, the right lung is probably already 
already know, has three lobes. So the groove between each lobe is identified as a fissure. And on the right lobe, that is a smaller fissure known as the um, horizontal fissure. And the horizontal fissure is going to separate the superior lobe from the middle lobe. And the oblique fissure on the right side is going to separate the middle lobe from the inferior lobe as well as the superior lobe from the inferior lobe. Okay. It curves around the lung so that we see it posteriorly here, like that. So on the posterior aspect, the superior lobe is very small portion of it, and most of your posterior lung surface is inferior lobe. So, you want to come up front and do my model, my lung model? Just face the room, the, the front of the room. All right, so here's her scapula on each side. The oblique fissure is going to come across in that pattern right there. So this is all you would see of her superior lobe. And when we take the test, you're going to feel the pressure in my hand there. You'll be able to, you should not miss that question, okay? All of this is inferior lobe. Thank you. So if you're lying in bed with pneumonia, gravitational, the fluid is going to be more likely in your inferior lobe. So if you're listening to somebody's lungs with a stethoscope and you're hearing wet breathing sounds, um, they're more likely going to be below the scapula, and all of that is inferior lobe. Okay. On the right side, we have only one fissure. Oblique. The oblique fissure. So this would be our superior lobe and inferior lobe. Both lungs have an indentation in the medial aspect called the cardiac notch. It's just more significant and more easily seen on the left side. And that creates this kind of tongue-like portion of the superior lobe known as the lingula. Yes. You said that one is the right? Left. Okay. Sorry, I misspeak. Left lung. Now, when we look at surfaces, remember we talked about anterior, posterior, medial borders, lateral, um, lateral border of the heart, right, left borders of the heart. We also have surfaces with the lung, okay? So, any area that is in contact with the ribs, anterior, lateral, or posterior, is identified as a costal surface. And I think by now you recognize costal and, and rib. Yes? Is it so only the left lung has the only, lung? Yes. Well, the right lung just doesn't have a significant cardiac notch for that. Okay. So we'll just identify it on the left. And then notice it says lingual. I'm assuming that was a typo, right? Yeah. It should be lingual. Lingual. But it refers still to lung. Uh, obviously, we said this was the apex and the base. The base is going to associate in, in a fully inspired lung is going to be in contact with the diaphragm. So the base of the surface is also known as the diaphragmatic surface. And then this area in here where the pilus is contained is in bordering on both sides of the heart. And so these surfaces here are mediastinal surfaces. The hilus is in the mediastinal surface. Now let's take a look at the mediastinal surface. And we're going to look at the relationship here between the bronchi and pulmonary arteries and pulmonary veins. So we look at this view. This is looking at an anterior view. All right, so the pulmonary trunk here is going to be anterior to the trachea. I think you can figure that out if you 
speak about the relationship of the heart to the trachea and airways. Now notice the relationship as we move over to the entrance and exit of these structures through the, through the lungs. On the right side, the bronchi are posterior, more posterior. The pulmonary artery, remember that's blue, but it's in our it's thicker wall because of the pressure that it's under, is going to be anterior, and our pulmonary veins are anterior and inferior. However, when we compare that to the left side, notice the relationship of the pulmonary artery to the bronchus. Instead of being anterior, it loops over it. So if we were to cut through this, as we do when we separate the lung from these structures, and we look at the mediastinal surface, we're going to see that the pulmonary artery is going to be superior to the bronchus, and the pulmonary veins will still be um, slightly anterior and inferior. So here we see the, what lung is, what side of the lung are we looking at, right or left? There's two lobes, so that is your left. That's oh, is that right. three? Right. Oh, right. is that right. two? Yeah. There's a horizontal. There's the oblique. Oh, I always only see so, two. So, well, what, we have this arching groove here. I thought the aorta was on the left side. Why do we see this arch here? Here's looking from the, to the right side of the heart. So we took the right lung out of this side. We're looking towards the right side of the heart. Here are the structures um, that we just cut. Here's the pulmonary artery anterior to the bronchus. 